Welcome to WordCamp Boston, day two. Um, today we're going to be talking about WordPress for schools and how you can save taxpayer money by moving school websites to WordPress. So a little bit about me. So for the past five and a half years, I've been the webmaster at Newark Public Schools, which is the largest school district in New Jersey, about uh, 60,000 students. Anywhere between 68 and 75 schools, depending on the year. We open and close schools every year. So, I've been a blogger since 1997. I mean, really, I <laughs> pioneered the space a long, long time ago. Um, I've been doing uh, web development, website design, content management, system development uh, for well over 20 years. Um, I haven't really blogged in about 10 years, but I still do a lot of a lot of communication online through Facebook, and Slack, and a lot of other Twitter. Um, I used to work a lot in the open source software development community. I was doing uh, a lot of development for Apache Software Foundation, Sun Microsystems, uh, Motorola. I was teaching these big companies how to do open source software development back when it was still a very new thing. Unfortunately, all these all these technologies weren't open source. Uh, we were teaching them open source software development, but they weren't doing everything in the open source manner. And so we were trying to get them over on, over to the you know doing uh, getting them to do more open source software. Um, I was the founder of a thing called the CMS List, which back in the early 2000s there was about 40 or 50 thousand people working in the space and all of them were on this mailing list. Um, it grew out of a bird of a feather session at the open source software development convention in Portland, Oregon. And myself and a guy named Phil uh, built this list. We were doing a lot of work with Moveable Type, Drupal. <laughs> WordPress was still kind of like very, very, very new. And we built this list. I was barely paying attention to WordPress. Um, but in 2003, uh, I was at the open source software convention, and this kid comes up to me, and he's uh, you know, he's on my mailing list, and uh, he comes up to me and he goes, are you, are you Cameron Barrett? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. He goes, I'm Matt Mosley, I just want to shake your hand, I'm on your mailing list. And that's when I first met Matt, 2003, 2004, I don't remember exactly the year. Um, here's a real world example of a software development project that I was on when I was working for the US Army. Um, we spent six months with four developers, UI designer, graphic designer. We spent a million dollars on this project. And it was a an online community for uh, people at the high level of the, of the government, the Department of Defense, to actually communicate with each other, and it was all built on .NET, which is what their, what they, you know, their requirement. And uh, spent all this money, and I'm like, we built a beautiful product, and then uh, sent it down to DC. And uh, somebody at the high level of the government was like, no, we don't need that. Cancel the project. I'm like, well, what do we what do we spend all this money for? We're just going to cancel the project. But if we'd done that in open source, we could have released the code for anybody else to use. But because it was proprietary .NET, we couldn't do anything with it. We had to throw it away. Um, the same group that I was working with at that West Point is now developing a new product on top of WordPress. Um, I haven't checked touch base with them in about a year, but as far as I know, they're still going, going with it. Right. Yay. So, but what about schools? That's why we're here. Like, who here is a parent who has children in public schools? And who here, raise your, raise your hand, who here absolutely hates your public school's websites? Right? They're just... They're hard to use. They're 
really, really not done well. Um, oh wait, one more thing. So before I was at Newark, I had this opportunity to go work at Toys R Us Corporate in Wayne, New Jersey. And uh, I was going to be the director of UX design for their, their new e-commerce product. And uh, this was 2013, yeah, 2013. Great opportunity. I'd come from Borders. I actually built the first Borders.com website. Who remembers Borders books and music, right? Amazing company. I was there in the late 90s, built their first e-commerce site. Um, they, of course, went bankrupt in 2012, but uh, still a great company. Uh, Toys R Us now also is bankrupt, so not a, not, I'm not setting the pattern. <laughs> it's, not, it's not me. Um, but I, um, I turned the job down because it would have required a lot of travel to Poland where their, um, where their new development team was. And I just, I, I just come from a job, I was working at the World Economic Forum for a couple of years. And I was in Geneva every, like, every two or three months I'd be in Geneva working with them. I loved the job, it was great. Always, you know, Geneva's a beautiful city. Um, so I had to turn the job down at Toys R Us because, well, <laughs> I had a baby daughter and I had a wife. And the wife said no. She's like, no, you just came from a job where you were traveling too much, you were never home. And so I turned, I turned the job down. And instead, I took the job at Newark because it was a local commute and I felt that I could make a difference um, one more thing about me. One of the reasons I got into the Door Public Schools District is because um, I care about education. And the reason I care about education is because my parents were school teachers for the Department of Defense. And I grew up in places like this. This is uh, Pongo Pongo here in Samoa. And places like this. This is Menwith Hill Royal Air Force Base in Northern England. Um, it's actually the hub of one of the one of the echelon hubs for top secret communication in, the, in Europe. Uh, but this is my childhood. So I grew up in a very school teacher centric, education centric family. And uh, I realized I didn't want to be a teacher. So I went into technology and I realized that I could use my skills in the technology field to help the educational field. Uh, because I'm not a teacher, I'm a technologist. And uh, I wanted to fix this problem that public schools have. Like, why are the websites so bad? Um, there's 14,000 plus public school districts in the US. And they all have websites. Actually, they all have multiple websites. Usually a website for the district. Anywhere from two to 150, or in the case of New York City, <laughs> 4,000 schools, I'm not sure. I'm getting wet. I'm getting dripped on. Um, this is like 4,000 schools in New York City or something like that. They all have websites, right? Oh, wait, wait, wait. They all have crappy websites, right? Everybody hates their public school websites because they don't look good. They're hard to use. Um, they look like this. It's like, this was the home page for New York Public Schools for about 10 years. And it was a wall of text that never changed. And if you're a parent trying to find information, you're not going to come back to that website again and again because there's nothing there but a wall of text you've already read. This was the New York Public Schools website um, when I joined the district five years ago. And uh, whoa, WTF, I mean, what the flash, right? Though everything on red box was a flash object, in, 19, in 2014, you know, the, the, the iPhone had already been out for seven years. Everybody was viewing their websites on an iPhone or a smartphone. Flash just didn't work. And so this website looked like that on an iPhone. It was horrible. Like, you just couldn't use it. And this was the, this was the template technology provided by the CMS vendor. There it is on the iPhone. So this was with Flash. This is with Flash turned off. This is with this is with you know Flash objects not rendering in an iPhone. It's it was a complete failure. 
you know, to the end user. Um, you know, parents reported that they did not regularly use their children's web school's websites because they were too hard to use. Um, and it's not the school's fault. You know, it's, it's a fault of the technology vendor providing outdated templates, outdated technologies. Um, you know, the, the CMS technologies for editing the content were really, really bad. And I like using this phrase, you know, they're being sold closed source vendor control. Oracle barely working, confusing user interface, you know, software as a sort of service solutions. You know, all of these things can be fixed. Um, the people editing the websites were often like, oh, wait, 10 minutes? All right, I better go faster. Um, the people using the websites are like, well, it's too hard to use this CMS. We can't update the websites uh, frequently enough. It's just bad templates, bad design. Clipart mania, like who's gone to a school website and it's just really bad at Microsoft Clipart. Um, the technology people in the district are like, well, we could fix this problem if we had access to the technology, but because it's proprietary, we don't have access. Um, this is just an example of all of the men, and not even all of them, this is about half of the market selling proprietary technologies to school districts. And so the solution is to move all these districts to WordPress. Um, you know, you can fire your vendors. Uh, start saving those taxpayer dollars by migrating to WordPress. Um, so I'm going to go up here so I can read my slides a little better. Um, the case study I like to use is uh, New York Public Schools, 40,000 students, 75 websites. Uh, up front, we spent $30,000. Uh, we host on WP Engine. Uh, so year one cost uh, was sixty-four thousand dollars to build out the website, but they were spending fifty-nine thousand dollars a year on a proprietary solution. So we took year one's cost, rolled it out by work, by spending it in one WordPress, and then year two cost was just the hosting server. Year three we got that even lower. Year three we're down to seventy-two hundred a year. So automatically we're saving, but we spent nine thousand dollars on content migration. Uh, 30,000 page site, 100,000 media assets, it's a massive, massive website. You know, we ran a, an import script that was custom against that proprietary CMS. Um, a story I like to tell about this is when I talked to the technology vendor, um, which I won't mention by name, but if you're very astute, you can determine who that, what that company is by reading. Um, they, I talked to the technology people and they said, hey, can I get a dump of the database? And they're, they're like, oh, let me talk to uh, our, to our uh, account, our, our guys. And I said, OK. A couple days later, I said, hey, can I get a dump of the database? Because I wanted to write a content, a database migration script from one database to another. And uh, they said, no, we can't give it to you because it's uh, proprietary. It's uh, the database technology is proprietary. I said, what do you mean? They said, well, our schema is, is intellectual property. If we give you a dump, we're going to give you our, our intellectual property. And we're like, oh, OK. So we just we just wrote a script that scraped the HTML, sucked out the content, and injected it into WordPress. So in five years, we've saved $158,000. And you know, all that money can be spent on other things that help, that help school districts. So here's an example of another project that I was brought on to. Uh, to out. And uh, this is Osceola County Public Schools in Florida. And they were going to do a five-year contract with uh, Edlio, which is a proprietary system. And they were going to spend $750,000. And I'm like, I'm like, what? <laughs> and and I, I couldn't talk them out of it. They were so far down the path of choosing that vendor. I couldn't talk them into moving to WordPress. but. And they ended up, this was four years ago, they ended up spending that money in, and I'm sure the website still suck. So, you know, if we move to WordPress, we can save millions and millions and millions of dollars by moving, by, you know, just getting rid of these horrible proprietary systems, which cost too much money year over year. Um, we can spend that money by giving teachers raises, restoring for K. Um, this is an example, this is the design that I did for Newark. Um, it doesn't look like that anymore, but it's actually even better now. 
um, you know, with a nice menu management in WordPress. This is one of the high school sites, so we have a parent-child theme going on. This is a school district in Utah that uses WordPress. They're even bigger, they're 92 schools. This is one of their websites, their school websites. Uh, Montclair, New Jersey moved to WordPress and then moved away from WordPress. And now I'm talking to them, let's bring it back to WordPress. So there's a lot of changes in school districts when there's staff turnover. They often abandon technology projects and then bring in a vendor. Next year, bring in a different vendor. So it's a, it's a, that's a constant battle. Uh, Fairfield, Connecticut is on WordPress. Um, I standardized on some things. Um, when I build out school districts, I use the Genesis framework with the Genesis child theme. I'm using Beaver Builder with Ultimate Add-ons and PowerPack. Um, I don't think Gutenberg is mature enough yet for doing the kinds of things that the school districts need. Uh, it's getting there. I think we're about a, a year away from it, from Gutenberg being as robust as what provided with Beaver Builder. Um, I like Beaver Themer because it gives, it exposes the tempo, template framework for editing to, to the end user. Um, you know, standardized on these plugins. So, the Quiddy ABC staff list, Memphis Docs, if they don't have Google Free to you, uh, Broadcast, Multi Sig Cloner, and just various CPTs that I've created for uh, a lot of different things. Um, some other stuff for building in WordPress. And I started a company called School Presser, which does exactly this thing. It's, it migrates school districts from WordPress, or from proprietary CMSs. To, school, to uh, WordPress. There's 14,000 public school districts. They all need this solution. Um, here's another site that I built. I migrated them from, from a proprietary system to, to school press, or to WordPress. And this is uh, down in Texas. Here's one here, another one in New Jersey that I just finished. Here's another one in New, in New Jersey and New York that I did. Uh, here's one, another one I need. I'm, I, I'm in, I live in New Jersey, so it's easy for me to sell in sell New Jersey. Another one in New Jersey. And I'm also starting to build out these verticals. Um, because it's not just school districts that need this, that need WordPress. You know, they need other verticals. There's uh, lawyers, medical offices, you know, uh, summer camps, um, you know, towns. Uh, town websites are terrible. They should all be on WordPress, right? So. Starting to build out those verticals, uh, taking the same model I have with school presser and applying it to other verticals. And then you can fire the vendors, save tax money. And then I want everybody here to support the school districts. You know, if you know WordPress and you're here, you can you know, hear through the grapevine or something that your school district hates their website, and you can say, hey, I know WordPress really well, I can help you. Um, Go talk to your school district technology people, float the idea. Fire these expensive vendors. And now we're QA. And this is me. districts have dedicated uh, translation departments because they have the resources to do that. And in that case, what I do is I use like a tab structure on the pages so that the English in one tab and then you can tab between the different languages offered where it's natively translated content. And are they, the people that are using the Google Translate, what problems are they running into? Mostly just, it translates into garbage sometimes. <laughs> it's, just, you know, it's machine translation. You know, if you're a native Spanish speaker and you're reading Something that's machine translated, you know, some of the words are going to be out of order. Uh, it's just the, the biggest issue is trying to is native translation for a lot of content costs a lot of money, and the, the search just they're like they're looking at their budget going, we won't have it. We're going to rely on machine translation. I spoke yesterday. I saw your, in what language? So I was curious what you were finding in, in the. Yeah, I saw I saw your presentation. It was really good. Oh, okay. I'm actually going to go look at your company because I was like. Ooh. <laughs> There's a resource <laughs> I didn't know about. Um, another, another question here? Yeah. Uh, 
what's the like, support models? One of the big challenges still have not just the initial budget, but the like, training. Not so, of course, but yeah, most contracts I sign have two days of training on site or through you know, Zoom or video conferencing. Um, and then if they want to purchase additional training, they can. And then support, I offer the hosting and the maintenance of the WordPress, but I don't offer content management maintenance. If they don't have somebody on staff to do content management, I often will say, hey, go talk to GoWP or one of these companies that does per ticket content management. Uh, because oftentimes it's cheaper, not, it's not great, but oftentimes it's cheaper for the school district to say, really, we're only editing our website 20, 30 times a year, right? We, don't, we can't afford a full-time staffer for that, and there's nobody else on staff who knows this technology or wants to know this technology, um, or, because they already have seven jobs, they need an eighth, right? So there's a lot of different ways you can handle that. But for the technology maintenance, it's all in WP Engine. My server is WP Engine. It's all, I, I let them handle security, and uh, um, I handle the WordPress updates to keep it secure. I'm moving everything over to manage WP. Uh, she says we're done. Okay, one more question. How do we help get school districts to you? How do you help school districts come to me? Uh, Schoolpressor.com. <laughs> or you can have them give me a phone call or an email. Um, I'm talking to districts every day uh, about, and the sales cycle is really, really long. Sometimes it's, sometimes, I mean, the longest one took me a year and a half, like 18 months from starting to talk to them to actually getting the contract signed. And it's just, you have to work within their budget cycle. So, and I think that's the last question, so we're done. Thank you.